defies ordinary classification. Blackers in black, times infinity, infinity. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Blue here with Black and Black Times Infinity. This video is a roundtable interview that we got to do with the executive producers of Photon Legendary Defenders that is on Netflix. And this interview is with Joaquin Dos Santos and Lauren Montgomery. This interview was taken during San Diego Comic Con 2018. So let's go ahead and start with the roundtable. Um, so let's talk about the Shiro and Adam thing. Uh, how long has that been in development? Was that something you guys planned from the start? Or was it something that uh, sort of came along in the process? Uh, I mean, it's something that's been in Shiro's character basically from the start. Uh, we had to kind of shift things around with how we rolled out the backstories, uh, just due to like scheduling things. Um, and at one point, as you know, Shira was potentially going to kick the bucket. So once we found out that that wasn't going to happen, we knew we could kind of pull it off on this video. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's something that's been part of this character from the get. And we're just super excited to be able to like finally kind of get it out there in the world. What's it been like to have people like almost constantly being like, it's show going to be good, show going to be good. You have to be like, yeah. we're working on well, it. It's similar to when we, before the the show premiered and we're like where's, where's the women where's the women yeah. and, we're, and we kind of had to buy our chance because we knew kids was going to be a real little guy and it's similar here where we know it's coming we know people are going to be upset because they haven't seen it yet but we just hope that on the back end they'll forgive us yeah and then they're along <laughs> for the ride regardless yeah. of like where anybody stands just enjoy the ride and then uh, if you guys know how do Shiro and Adam identify in their sexuality like gay bisexual anything like that um, I, I think we just kind of consider They're in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's where yeah, they are. I, I think the important thing is maybe allow the fans to see what they want to see. If yeah. We don't want to put anyone in the corner a lane. Where it's like, so other people feel like they are not represented. Just so you know, like us confirming or not confirming one way or the other <laughs> either leads to like our Twitter being destroyed or not being destroyed. <laughs> Um, and we realize that that's people's passion for the show and for the characters, and we appreciate it. Um, we just don't want anybody to feel like they're not doing it. So. Sure. Um, Were you guys um, kind of excited about the reaction you got from the crowd when they did show that scene? Yeah. That's true. I mean, we're, we've been waiting a lot. There's actually quite a lot of motherly love in the show, you know, with like Julia, Hagard, you know, in her own way, and also Voltron because the lioness is, um, you know, but, and they all have their different ways of defending their young, protecting what's most important to them. So, you know, what, what did you want the audience to take away from that? I think just generally in, in our show, we kind of want the audience to just take away this theme of love and acceptance and appreciation. Uh, it comes out in a motherly way, it can come out in a familiar way, in just a bond of friendship that is so strong. There's a lot of ways that we kind of push that theme of love and hopefully acceptance and just Everyone being themselves. It's all the good things that we want to put out there. Yeah. And we just, you know, they come out in, in all these. Oh, moving on. There we go. Yeah. Let's um, go down so, in the season six trailer, there was a lot of um, shots of, like, it seemed to indicate that there was a Galra Civil War going on, but then there really wasn't a whole lot of that in Season 6, and, and with them going back to Earth in Season 7, is that something that we're going to see in Season 7? It is, still plays it, out. I mean, that storyline is, is still happening in the background. You know, we've got a lot of moving parts to the series, so we've got to cover different things, and we can't put focus... I, we say it all the time, but there could be entire novels written about what's going on not with Yeah, and... We've had people ask, like, what are, what are, what's the coalition up to? And it's kind of one of those things where we kind of have to show on screen, like, the parts of the story that mean the most to the story that's playing out. And, yeah, the Civil War is happening kind of off screen. They'll mention it a few times. And it's the same with, like, the Rebel Coalition. They're doing all their work, but it's kind of mostly off screen because we've got, like, a bunch of characters that we've got to yeah. make sure are in, present in the show. We did, it's like we did, we did the opposite of writing ourselves in the corner. We wrote ourselves into, like, a giant universe <laughs> where we're like, well, we can't show it. <laughs> are there any things that you guys have worked out about what's going on that you don't that see in the show but that you would like to say, like, oh, we think this is going on, right? 
I just like to think that, you know, we've got, obviously, with all the wars, some wars happening, there's still um, planets out there that are dominated by the Valor, and I like to think of the coalition, as, you know, they're out there, they're pulling off their missions, they're still leaning into those planets. If they need Voltron as backup or something, they do it, but it's just kind of, it, that's like the most boring part. Of the machine is <laughs> rolling. It's like, all right, we got to clean up this galaxy. Yeah. But, you know, it's the stuff that... Yeah. So that, that civil war is, is coming, and, and but it, the worst, and they have the season eight, correct? C- civil war is continually happening. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, w- but you're ending in season eight, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So what are what can we expect to be the big bad finale? That ending? We're going to tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good effort. Camera's on Good effort. Effort. <laughs> following up on that, can you tell us a little bit about Voltron's supposed upgrade? Just some of the, the toys that are being released with the, the new black paint that they have. I mean, I'd say Voltron is like in a constant state of evolution. So as the paladins grow and bond with their lions, so do you know their ability. To attack. Um, I don't know that there's a you know direct tie necessarily to the toy itself, but. Voltron's constantly evolving. So, so the hyper phase was just like a, a con exclusive. Yeah. yeah. I think it yeah. was kind of a little bit of a going from like the last episode with Voltron and Voltron's fight in the contestants. Right. Field. And so I think they just kind of came up with this is this version of Voltron if he's fully infused. But it's not, I don't expect to see that exact right. Voltron show up. It's more of like the conceptual representation of where Voltron goes. Yeah. So speaking of evolution, um, have you guys heard from any like old school Voltron fans? who are, you know, didn't get maybe didn't get that representation in the past and are now finding, you know, you know, new new reasons to watch Voltron, new reasons to like, you know, get back to the show. I, I don't know that it I don't know whether it directly ties to like yeah. not feeling that representation in the past. I think they're just excited that the characters are evolving and the characters maybe have a bit more meat on their bones in terms of what they can, you know, see in them. Um, yeah, I mean they're, they're, it's a, it's a weird thing because I, I, as a young girl, love the movie The Little Mermaid. I still love it today. But when I, if I were to make that movie today, would I have you know, the prince save the day and the real get saved? Probably not. I would have her save her mom or you know, her, her mom. Yeah. But that doesn't change like what that meant to me as a kid. Yeah. And so I think the people who watched Voltron, it's hard to go back and judge something that was made in a very specific time. Right. Like, and it's so it near, like, and it's so near to your heart. But like, you can really just appreciate that like people are going out of their way to, to make things better. Um, and speaking of like when you were approaching rebooting it, uh, what? had to be in there, and what uh, didn't you get to put in there? I mean, we said from the get-go, we sort of had to pass the squint test, so visually you had to kind of recognize who everybody was, and that the lions were clearly the lions that your mind's eye would remember from the original series, even though they're, you know, standing side by side, there's very clear differences. Um, generally, like, the character's personalities shifted like, yeah. a yep. decent amount. Like, Punk was kind of a, an angrier guy in the original, and like, we've got our kind of lovable, like, Giant and punk, right. and then uh, you know Keith obviously is very different. Lance, Lance, we keep a little bit of kind of his yeah. goofy fun funness. Um, I also like that Lance in the original could kind of like smell a rat. Yeah. He was like, mm, something's not right here, and he's still doing that. Now, being a kid of the 80s, like I kind of grew up watching the original Voltron, and we all know about the 15 different. Vehicle to Voltron. Vehicle Voltron. Yeah, do you guys think you'll ever, ever like kind of touch on that a little bit or make even like a reference later on? Like, would there would there be a chance for Voltron 2 to take on that role of the 15 vehicles? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, that, I think that's just a bridge that we're crossing. We'll get to. <laughs> it's, it's a lot to think about. Yeah. 15 vehicles to form one robot. Yeah. 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 The, <laughs> like, the amount of time it takes. It's a yeah. Lot. It's a lot. <laughs> And the, uh, the shifting of like leadership and the Black Lion Paladin changing was in the original too. And how did you approach bringing that into the reboot? Did you want to keep the death of a uh, hero? Sure. Or, yeah. 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 It, was an original it was an original plan. Idea yeah. To have Shiro kind of exit the the show and Keith would move up. Um, but you know things happen where they didn't. Shiro was going to die. 
it ended up with this really interesting story. So it, it wasn't necessarily for a better or for worse. It just kind of made our story different. Yeah. It actually opened a lot of doors to new storylines that we didn't necessarily anticipate, yeah. but had a great deal of fun exploring, like Keith spending all this time with the Blade of Marmora. That's something that, had Shiro been gone and Keith stayed with the Voltron, would not wouldn't have happened on the level that you see. Right. So we just kind of appreciate, or we like to appreciate the story that we've been able to tell. Because, you know, we can sit there and be like, wait, we're going to do this, but no one's ever going to see the culmination of that. It's almost not even worth so like, what Tom's talking you, about. It's, it's not where the story wound up. Yeah. Are you glad, though, that now, because you didn't kill Shiro, you didn't end up killing a gay character? No, I mean, you know, if we had killed him, we would have found put that a different place for the record. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it been another character. It, again, it, it doesn't matter... He was in a relationship, yeah, yeah. and I think that's the important thing to take away, like, that he was making a choice of, like, the mission over his relationship, and I think that's the point of importance, really, with that scene. I think it's great that it has resonated, uh, and hopefully will continue to resonate beyond that. But it, could, could you see this going into, like, a theatrical production, and maybe even video games after the end of this run? All day, what would you like to see? Video games, theatrical, novels. Live action. Live action. Live action. Or VR where you can see live action. Are you guys going to try to continue to sort, like, kind of like how Power Rangers has different iterations? Are you going to attempt to try to do something else with that? I think it definitely has that potential. Yeah. Yeah. That's really a place. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think we And like Final Fantasy, you can do mm-hmm. different versions that aren't necessarily like, you know, they have the same themes, and we'll have like a chocobo in every line. All right, and that's it for the roundtable interview with the executive producers of Netflix's Voltron. If you'd like to catch Voltron, it season seven premieres August tenth, with season eight and the final season airing later on this year of two thousand eighteen. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit and smash that like button, subscribe button, and we'll check you out in the next video. Until then, see ya.